Royal Dutch Shell has taken the final investment decision on the Prelude floating liquefied natural gas project in Australia, building the world's first LNG facility. Moved far out into the sea some 200 km from the nearest land in Australia, the FLNG facility will produce gas from offshore fields and liquefy on board by cooling. The decision means that Shell is now ready to start detailed design and construction of what will be the world's largest floating offshore facility in a shipyard in South Korea. From the boat to the stern, Shell's FLNG facility will be 488 meters long and will be the largest floating offshore facility in the world, longer than four soccer fields laid end to end. When fully equipped with its storage tanks full, it will weigh around 600,000 tons, roughly six times as much as the largest aircraft carrier. Our innovative FLNG technology will allow us to develop offshore gas fields and that otherwise would be too costly to develop said Malcolm Brindage, Shell's executive director, Upstream International. Our decision to go ahead with this project is a through breakthrough for the LNG industry, giving it a significant boost to help meet the world's growing demand for the cleanest burning fossil fuel. Moving on, the Golar LNG majority-owned Golar LNG Energy has reported a net loss of 45.5 million US dollars an operating loss of 33.3 .3 million US dollars for the year ending on December 31st, 2010. Compared to a reported net loss of 2.2 million US dollars, an operating loss of 1.1 million US dollars, first trading August 12, 2009 to December 31st, 2009. Revenues in the year were 64.2 million US dollars. Revenues from vessels were weaker during 2010 relative to 2009 and result of low demand. However, the spot market improved significantly during the second half of the year due to increased demand and supply of LNG. In January 2011 this year, Golar concluded charters for four of its vessels at relatively attractive rates for periods between 12 and 18 months. Average utilization for the year was 61% with average daily time charter equivalent rates at $20,678 per day, excluding the contribution from the Golar freeze. The fleet as of 31st December 2010 stood at 366 vessels, including FSRUs and Regus vessels, on a further 27 on order. That's it from here. We'll be back soon as we have some more. Stay tuned.